Hey guys, welcome back. This is the second video in my playlist of understanding computer science, game design. In the last video, I went over all the different variables and what they all are. And today's video, I'm going to be highlighting the core components of computer science, or the four cornerstones of computational thinking, which you need to know. So without further ado, the four core components of computer science are algorithms, abstraction, decomposition, and pattern recognition. So firstly, what is an algorithm? Well, an algorithm is a sequence of logical instructions made to complete a task. So a good example is making a cup of tea. You can create an algorithm to tell someone how to make a cup of tea in five steps. Step one, get a mug for your tea. Step two, fill up the kettle with water and boil it. Step three, add your tea bag to the mug and pour the water into the same mug. Step four, add your desired amount of milk and or sugar. And step five, stir the tea for roughly one minute. And now you have a cup of tea. Obviously different people make tea different ways, but this is just an example. And you can go into as much detail as you like in each step. For example, step two could just be fill up the kettle, then step three is to boil it. It all depends on how complex you want the algorithm to be. But you may be asking what this has to do with computer science. Well, I'm just explaining an algorithm in a more human everyday terms way to make it easier to understand. But in computer science, algorithms will be used to make computer programs or to tell a robot what to do or anything along those lines. So essentially, an algorithm is a set of instructions for the computer to follow to complete a task. And they're also a great way of automating computer decisions as you have already told the computer what to do when it faces a task. Next, we'll move on to abstraction. So abstraction is where you focus on only the important information or parts of a problem. So you're ignoring all the irrelevant details which you don't need to know to solve the problem. An example of this in the real world would be adding up the prices of something at the store. So let's say that Matt bought a pack of six apples for £1.60 and Jake bought some bananas for 73p. We want to find out the total price of these together before buying them. Now this is a simple addition equation obviously, but before you do that your brain abstracts the problem. So what information don't we need? Well we don't need to know who is buying what, so it doesn't matter that Matt is buying apples or that Jake is buying bananas, we just need to know that it costs £1.60 and 73p, so we then do £1.60 plus 73p which is £2.33. Or more famously, the London tube map is abstraction as well. You don't need all the different turns in there, or all the roads above, or the exact curvature of the river, so instead it is just straight lines going to the correct destination, with the general route of the River Thames as a reference point. As you can see from two pictures on screen now, the version on the right is a lot easier to read. And so in computer science, you would use abstraction to more easily solve complex problems, or create solutions to codes or computer programs, so that you can easily and quickly create things which with all the unnecessary details would take much longer and would be much harder. So abstraction involves filtering out the irrelevant details and information that we don't need so that we can concentrate on the important characteristics we do need. Now we'll move on to decomposition. So decomposition is breaking down a complex problem or system into smaller, more manageable parts. This, similarly to abstraction, is to make our lives easier so we can focus on different parts of a large problem. An example of this in the real world would be a police officer trying to solve a crime. This is quite a large complex problem, so they could break it down into six smaller problems which are a lot easier to manage. So they are, what crime was committed, when was the crime committed, where was the crime committed, what evidence is there, is there any witnesses, and have there been any similar crimes recently. So by breaking it down into six smaller problems, they can either go down them one by one instead of trying to solve the whole case in one go, or they can assign multiple people to tackle different problems, meaning it can be done a lot quicker. And this can be done in computer science too. If a program has crashed, then if you break it down into different sections or reasons, for example, it crashed because this happened, then why did that happen? Did it happen anywhere else? And just stuff like that. And you can solve each one individually, or get more coders like you to solve each problem, and then all come together to create a solution to the problem by fixing all the smaller problems first. So decomposition is the act of breaking down a large complex problem into multiple smaller, more manageable pieces in which you can tackle alone or share out with multiple people to work on without getting in each other's way. And finally, I've got pattern recognition. So pattern recognition is finding similarities and patterns in order to solve complex problems more efficiently. So again, it is about making it easier to solve large complex problems. For example, let's use the police officer solving a crime example again. If this same crime or something similar has happened multiple times before, there may be a pattern to it, meaning they can solve it easier if they find that pattern. So if they commit the crime at 1am every time, that is then a pattern. They know that whoever is doing it is always going out at 1am to do it. And it can be on the same day every time as well, or targeting similar houses or areas. And by finding these patterns and utilising the knowledge of this, they narrow down their search again. 
So in computer science, you typically do this with the decomposed problems, which I explained in the last point. For example, if a computer program crashed, again, you would decompose this into different problems. Then there may be a pattern which links these different problems. For example, all the problems may have occurred when a user tried to perform a similar task, or if different requests took similar amounts of time to complete the task, but maybe they got to a certain time, and that's when they crashed. Essentially, pattern recognition is looking at the pattern in problems so that you can solve these complex problems more easily. Something also typically becomes a pattern when it has happened three or more times. So if something similar has happened twice, it could just be a coincidence, but three or more times is usually considered a pattern by that point. And so that was the final one, but before I end, I just want to add credit to the BBC Bite Size website again for some help with definitions and examples, and I'd definitely recommend checking it out especially if you're British, as it's great for GCSE or A-levels. So again, there'll be a link for that in the description to BBC Bite Size Computer Science down below. So I think that'll be it for this video. We've covered the definitions of and examples in the real world and in computer science of algorithms, abstraction, decomposition, and pattern recognition. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. It honestly helps me out a lot and I really do appreciate it. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.